Now, now what we want to do is figure out how looking at light helps us to understand waves. Right. This is the, back to chemistry now. All right. Yeah. And um, it all started with um, some scientists analyzing the spectrum of hydrogen gas. Yes. Now, the way they did this, well, tell you what, we are going to jump to an experiment right now, and we're going to expo show you what it looks like. You've probably seen this before. We won't probably do the whole thing because it's too hard, but yeah. you'll, you'll we'll get do a bunch the idea. More in class. Yeah. So, folks, here I am um, looking at, um, I've got a spectral tube right here. So I'm going to apply a whole bunch of electricity. This could be like 10,000 volts or something like that. Do not put fingers in sockets when you turn on. Duh. That's one of those dumb moments. And in this tube, let me put it up here, I have argon gas. So this is a, a tube filled with argon gas. I'm going to turn it on, and it's going to make a light. This is like basically a light bulb. You've probably seen neon lights. And so as I turn it on, it makes a really cool purple color. All right. Now, the thing that's kind of cool that you can do is that you can take your cool glasses that I was wearing for our lightsaber fight, and these cool glasses then break up the light into a spectrum of colors. Okay. And so we'll see if we can do that with our. Uh, does that make us? It does. And so does it split it apart? Uh huh. Oh, how cool is that? So you can see as you're looking. What do you see, Mr. Sand? I see a bunch of different colors. I got a purple line and a green line and maybe like a red line and possibly some yellow in there. Okay. But we can see distinct colors that are not in the original color of the light. We have the, the colors all split up. Okay. Now. Let's now do that, and um, let's take a shot. Oh, nice. Woo! Okay, that was no problem. <laughs> All right, and I have another spectral tube, and you've seen these before. This one's filled with xenon gas. And so I expect to see something different. You'll see lines like we just did a minute ago, but you should see different lines because it is a different element. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. All right. Oh, great. Okay. Blue color. Nice blue color this time. I put on my glasses. So Mr. And Sam just bring the glasses on the... Uh, yeah, it's not quite as, as good as the last one. We got a little light coming in through our door there. But I've got a, a blue line. It's like a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of red. These are not quite as distinct as the last yeah, one. Yeah, probably have too dim of a bulb. But I think you get the idea that every element has its own set of spectral lines. And actually the more interesting thing is not the lines that are there, but the lines that are not there. Why don't we see all Roy G. Biv? Ah. Why don't we see those? And we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about that. All right. So this picture that we have on the screen now is the atomic spectrum of hydrogen. We didn't do the hydrogen um, spectrum at all um, when we did this, um, or on the, just a minute ago when we did the experiment. But we can see it right here, um, what it would look like. And this is interesting. So you would just see four lights, red, kind of teal, if you will, and a couple of shades of purple. Now, these, these, if you call, have wavelengths, mm -hmm. and they have particular numbers associated with them. I don't know what they are off the top of my head, um, but this would be probably in the 400 and, say, 20 nanometer range in, in nanometers. Nanometer, by the way, how big is a nanometer? Tiny. Ten to the ninth meters. Negative yeah. ninth meters. So it's Sorry. one one billionth of a meter. So yep. 470 or 20 billionths of a meter, and this purple would be somewhere in the 700 nanometer range. The reason I know that is that the visible spectrum is somewhere between roughly 400 and 700 nanometers. Did I do this wrong? I think they look backwards. I've got them backwards. Yeah. Yep. This is the 400 side, and this is the 700 side, isn't yep. it? Yeah, my mistake. Yeah, because the red is low energy, yeah, and low energies have long wrong. wavelengths. That's so this that. would be, you know, 420, yeah. and this would be like 680 That's or something like, like that. Yeah, okay. And so here's uh, another uh, schematic picture right. of and this. And this is going to kind of tell us why we have distinct lines, like Mr. Bergman was saying when he did his little demo there, versus the continuous Roy G. Bev spectrum. So what Mr. Mr. Um, Bohr, who figured this stuff out, he looked at these lines of the hydrogen atom, just, just um, like we can see here, and he found this particular wavelength, and he said, you know, if you think of this as a little ball. If a ball falls from this level, there's four levels. You can see the first level, they call the ground state, level two, level three, level four. Think of this like a building. It's kind of funny because it's got a very tall first story and the second story mm -hmm. shorter, et cetera. But if a ball fell from level three to level two, that would be this red color of light. And if it fell from 4 to 2, it would be this teal color right, of light. It's falling further, so therefore it releases more energy. And etc. We go here and we get different colors of light. 
Now, here's the odd thing about this. If you were to think of light as a particle, mm -hmm. then it's easy to envision it falling. So if I were to, if I were to uh, drop this heavy object onto the table. Okay. Actually, you can't see the table, can you? All right. That's right. Onto my hand. I'll try and catch it. I can drop it, and it releases a certain amount of energy. Ouch! But if I were to raise it a little higher, out of the screen, I would drop it. Ha! It hurts even more, right? Right, more energy. Because, because it gives more energy. Further. Now, that makes sense, but here's the problem about this. The energy can either be, let's say this is level one, where my hand is, yeah. and this is level two. So the electron can either be here, or it can be here, but it can't be anywhere in between. So You mean it can't, wait a second, if I drop something, no, it's not, and it falls it's from not here falling. to here, it's not it will have to be in between here and here, right? Right, but the electrons don't actually fall. Why? Because they can't be in between. They can only be here, or they can be But here. how does it get from here to there? I'm not a particle physicist. I don't know. It just does. It just goes. It goes from here, and then it, like, goes there. And actually, I have a way to under explain this, which we'll get to in a little bit later. I think it's in the second podcast. But it has to do with the fact that it kind of changes the shape of its movement. It has to do with atomic orbitals. There's S orbitals and P orbitals, and mm. you might remember that from last year. So um, that's still not really true. It has to do with the fact that it's a particle in a wave, and it's something that's, again, one of those hard-to-comprehend things. It can't exist in between No, it's here like and there. there, and then it's not there, and then it's back where it can yeah. be again. And here's a, another picture, actually, our end marker. Here's another picture that we can take a look at it, and this this what we were just looking at. Um, uh, it was called the Balmer series for hydrogen, and these are the different fallings. You know, here's from level four to level two, and here's three to two, and they give off particular. Here's the actual numbers of those wavelengths: yeah. 410, 434, 486, 656. And then for the infrared spectrum, if they fall down to the first level, um, we get something called the Lyman series, and there's even one called the Passion series. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, one thing that we we saw on the pod or on the uh, demonstration just a bit ago is we saw um, several different elements, right? Yeah. One thing that's cool about this, if if you have a different element, this of course is sodium right here, and this next one is mercury. Um, they have different lines. They do. And what, what, how can that help a scientist? Well, if we had an unknown substance and we could uh, make a little gas tube out of it like we yeah. had there and run some electricity through it and find out its spectrum, we could identify what element that is or what substance we're dealing with. And, of course, um, scientists also use this to look at the sun. The sun. Or the stars, uh, not just the sun. Of the course. stars. Because has anybody ever been like to the, to the sun and like scooped a piece out, brought it back to the earth, and done any, any chemical analysis? Not nah, that I'm aware of. I think you have a problem because it's yeah. like 6,000 degrees Celsius or millions or whatever. Or whatever. It's really it's hot. It's hot. Way hot. You'd like burn up and boil, mm -hmm. and that'd be bad. So how do they know that? They say, scientists, as far as I know, they always say, the sun is made up of 98% hydrogen or something like that. Yeah. Why? How do they know that? They look at its spectrum. Yeah, they just looked at the light. And so they can then point the point their spectroscopes, um, those fancy spectroscopes, and yep. they can say, oh, that one's made of hydrogen. Yeah. And uh, you look at the other one, you say, oh, that one's made of um, hydrogen. Yeah. And the other one over there, um, yeah, I see more hydrogen. Lots of hydrogen in the, air, yeah. in the universe. Okay. All right. This leads us to the Bohr model. So Mr. Bohr sat down. He did some math. Math. Because that's what we should all be doing in our spare time. Math. He was like Joe Mathematician. And he came up with an amazing equation. Yeah. It is the Bohr equation. Yeah. For lack of a better term. There it is. And he says the energy of um, a falling, if you will, is equal to this number. A very a small number. A falling electron. A le falling electron, pardon me. Which doesn't falling. really... Falling. Doesn't exactly electron. fall. Right. Yeah, you know, it's, it's this appear-disappear thing. And it's equal to z squared over n squared. Now, what's z? Mm. It's, of course, the atomic... Uh, number, number yep. of the atom. So for hydrogen, the atomic number would be one. one. And n is the level in the electron. Remember, we right. learned just level one, we have level two, we have level three. Mm -hmm. So you take that number and you square it. Right. Okay. Um, just as a side note, he only did this his research on the hydrogen atom, and this equation really only works nicely with hydrogen because there's all those other electrons mm -hmm. in all the other atoms and all the all the other uh, like uh, nuclear interactions going on. It works with hydrogen. That's right. That's about it. Well, yeah, 